um what's going on is y'all ready for this because i don't think y'all ready for this hey guys it's your girl michaela amari for those of you who don't know for those of you who do know welcome back to my channel and as you can see by the title today i'm going to be telling you guys all my tips and tricks that i have for you to start a successful youtube channel in 2022 this is definitely one of my most requested videos i get questions all the time in my dms on my lives in my comments on how to start a successful youtube channel how i did it how i grew my channel so quickly so so today I'm going to be giving you guys the whole complete rundown so that anytime you guys have a question you can always run back to this video I took the time like all day yesterday just to write down every little thing in my notes so I don't forget to say anything so if I keep looking down at my phone it's just because I wrote notes down so that I can make key points and other things like that so before I get into any of the tips I do want to be real with y'all like when it comes to YouTube everything is not all peaches and cream when you post on social media and you are allowing thousands and thousands of people to see your everyday life people will leave their opinions whether you have thick skin or not whether you feel like it won't bother you or not it's just something that you have to keep in mind that it's not just an easy job to do it can be very draining emotionally so i just want to let y'all know that before i say anything but the best part about youtube is that you can literally youtube how to youtube so here i am sharing the sauce with y'all because if i can't share the recipe on how to be great i'll never be great so y'all know I, I gotta share the sauce i gotta let y'all know what i know and i gotta put y'all on because the girlies want to know y'all can always count on me to get y'all right and whether y'all take it from me or not whether y'all want to or not what you do with this information you got the plan now this is the plan now you just need the platform and that's what you got to do so the first thing that i want to talk to y'all about is just my basic tips that i have for y'all the biggest thing when you have a channel is that you have to be yourself and be genuine your vibe and your personality is what makes people want to engage with you it's not like these people met you in real life it's not like they know you in real life these people are watching you off a social media platform so how you act that's what keeps people engaged with you and that's what keeps them wanting to see more because they like you for your personality just always be genuine because especially on youtube and especially nowadays and just in general it's really easy for people to see right through whatever persona you're trying to put up if you're trying to put one up and be somebody else for the camera i mean it's 2022 there's so much space for youtubers everybody is different so just be you and be genuine that will get you very far in the long run also i feel like everybody says this because it's really the truth consistency is key when it comes to youtube if you're not consistent you won't see growth you won't see changes in order to get better at something or to grow something you have to keep doing it keep doing it keep doing it even when your channel is at a slow spot even if your channel is popping off you have to be consistent consistency will bring you more engagement it will bring more people to your channel and being consistent will help your videos blow up faster one thing that i don't hear a lot of people say in these videos is that even when you're being consistent always remember that it's quality over quantity i'm gonna just leave that there and we're gonna move to the next subject. So my first little chapter of this video is going to be the equipment. I, the equipment questions were definitely the most asked questions because a lot of people think that to start a YouTube channel, you have to have a camera, you have to have all this fancy stuff, have to have all this expensive gear. But I'm here to tell you that that's not true. It's not true. So the first question that I got is, do you need a camera to start a channel? And obviously my answer to that is no. When I first started my channel, I was on a, I think iPhone 8, iPhone 8. And then after like when my channel kind of started popping off, I was filming off my mom's iPhone XR because I had an iPhone 8 and her phone was better than mine at the time. Having a phone, it got the job done. Really, you don't need to invest in a camera until you feel like that's something that you want to do. I didn't get a camera until I was almost at 11,000 subscribers. And that's just because I wanted to invest in myself and make my quality better. But if you just want to start off with a camera, you can always do that. But I would definitely recommend getting into it with just your phone, learning how to edit and doing all that other stuff. Because once you jump from a camera to a phone and like editing and stuff like that, it is kind of different. If you are starting a YouTube channel on your phone, I do recommend getting a probably like a phone tripod. That way you can set your phone up like 
like this face to face or like if you're making a montage or something like that it's easy for you to set your phone up instead of having to place it on 3,000 books and two candles that's what i used to have to do and it was always a hassle so with equipment comes lighting right now i'm using natural lighting from my window that i'm sitting right next to but i definitely do recommend getting a ring light it's not really mandatory but especially if you're trying to film at night or you want to be able to film like any time of the day, I definitely do recommend getting a ring light. Ring lights have little phone tripods on them so you can put your phone up there and stuff like that. So it really can count as a two in one. So the ring light that I have will be linked down below. It's the newer brand and it's right over there. It has stuff hanging up on it because I really don't know why. I've had that for almost like two years now. I'm on my second one. The last one that I had, I had for like two years also, but I kept it on like a lot and battery died. So this one I'm taking much better care of and I had it for almost two years and there's literally nothing wrong with it. It is on the pricier side, but Amazon does have other options, but the one that I have is linked down below. You can definitely start a YouTube channel on your phone or any other camera. A lot of people use different type of cameras because they want their videos to look a certain kind of way. I really don't know too much about cameras, so the camera that I have is the Canon G7X Mark II. It's the camera that everybody has, so I just decided to go ahead and get it. The kit that I got it on is linked down below. Last time I checked, it is like $730, so it is a huge investment. It's definitely worth that. I've had it for like a little less than a year now. I've had no problems with it. I really love this camera because you can vlog on it. You can make sit-down videos. It's really easy to use. A lot of y'all ask me what camera settings is my camera on. It's on just the normal settings that it came on. I don't know like I said I don't know nothing about camera so I did not change it and this is just how it looks so the next question for the equipment section is when is the appropriate time to get a camera it's really up to you and your preference you just really do what you want to do a lot of the phones that's coming out now like the one I have the iPhone 13 Pro Max it makes great quality videos just off the phone so especially if you have like a newer phone with like the good camera quality i definitely recommend that you could just use your phone because i use both i use my phone and my um camera to record especially if i'm doing like a vlog it's really just up to you so my next topic for this video is content i got a lot of questions like what content should i make what should i post what should be my first video first thing i would recommend for you to do is find your niche basically a niche is the category of the content you make so for example if you make vlogs fashion videos cooking videos makeup videos just find your niche and what type of videos that you want to do but that doesn't mean you have to restrict yourself to just doing that one thing because i feel like a lot of the times when youtubers stick to one niche it's kind of hard for them to expand their channel out to other stuff so that's why i've always done blogs sit down videos playlist videos and just showing y'all whatever i do in my daily life because if i just stick to doing vlogs y'all are only going to want to see vlogs so you have to kind of expand your content kind of do a little bit of everything but really just know what your channel is based on another tip that i have is make content that you would watch if you film a video edit it and then watch it back and you cannot sit through it because it's boring nine times out of ten another person watching your video is going to think the same it's really no like handbook to say oh post this post this post this but in order for you to really find what you want to do you have to make content that you enjoy watching and just put a spin on it so the next question is what video should i start with for me i started with the get to know me video and if i could go back i would not have done that because my first video to actually get a good number of views was a what's on my iphone i recommend like what's on my iphone maintenance vlog so if you're gonna get your hair done your toes done your lashes done if you got all your appointments lined up vlog it i guarantee you it'll, it'll do some numbers if you're moving or apartment searching or buying a new car definitely recommend those videos um playlist videos morning routines haul videos all those videos always do good they're always on trend somebody is always searching up a morning routine or what's on my iphone because doing just like a get to know me i'm not gonna lie to y'all who cares say like the get to know me for after you starting to get some momentum picking it up because a lot of the times people won't even watch it like and that's just the truth so another key part to posting content is you have to make sure that your titles are searchable don't just put some random title like i went to school today we had a pet rally and then i went to the beach afterwards like you have to put something that somebody would actually watch if that's what your video is about you will put oh a day in my life school vlog get ready me for school school pet rally like 
like you have to put stuff that people will actually search up so that way your videos can pop up you make videos with just random titles your videos are just going to be less likely to be seen so make sure that you have something that stands out in your titles on my channel there's a lot of like i say what i'm doing after that i'll say some of the things that i did in the video so say in the past um it was thanksgiving i bought an iphone 13 pro max i went to the beach i put key things in the title that way people can want to click on them the next question is how do you come up with video ideas me personally i just watch youtube to find youtube video ideas that's just how i i've always done it if i see somebody that does a video that i want to do i'll watch it and then just like okay i want to recreate this and just think of my own ideas and my own spins honestly no content creator wants to be copied for their creativity that they came up with that's the key point to youtube you have to make things your own because if you copy another youtuber people will tell you have to make your content your own but also make sure that you give credit so my day 444 of ghosting everyone and protecting my peace i didn't come up with that video idea that was Vanessa soleil's video idea so what i did i seen her video i was inspired by it i was going through something in my life that fit with the video so i'm like okay i'm gonna recreate this video i recreated the video the same message but i just made it my own to fit me look at the video it's doing numbers you can do the same video that another person is doing just make sure you give credit another question that i got a lot is how do i get my videos out there the number one answer the only answer i have is your thumbnails your thumbnails and your titles are basically your first impression on youtube these people don't know you your thumbnails and your titles are your first impression so make your title searchable make your thumbnails neat pretty attractive and if it pops up on a recommended page because me I go on my recommended page and if I see a cute thumbnail that I like and I'm like mm, this looks interesting I click on it sometimes the people only have like 600 subscribers and I still sit there and watch because that thumbnail got me and I want to see what they're doing if you make a good enough thumbnail and it looks nice and it looks neat it's not all jumbled up it looks aesthetically pleasing I'm telling you your videos will get out there along with the searchable titles. I'm telling you, that's a two for one combo. And also with that, it's just consistency. If you're posting good videos with good thumbnails and they're coming out regularly, YouTube notices you and then they push out your videos more. You get on the recommended page, you get more engagement, more viewers, more subscribers. I'm telling you, that's a three for one. Like it's three for one now. Like you gotta put in that work. Like honestly, it's no handbook, but these are the tips that can help you get there. So my last question for this chapter is how many times to post a week? I would say at least two or three. When I was in my lower subscriber count, I mean, I'm not, I don't have like a million subscribers. But I had like 9K, 8K, 6K, stuff like that. I was posting two times a week and that really helped me get to where I wanted to go. I went from like 4,000 subscribers to 15,000 quick because I was posting, I was on it. And then after a while, it's just like once I stopped, posting regularly i was still growing but i was growing slower than i would my videos were just not doing as good as they would so once you keep posting and you picking up that momentum it will help you get to where you need to be but after graduation that's what i'm trying to like move towards because once you keep posting posting regularly is going to get you where you need to be so the next thing we're going to talk about is editing editing is a very important part of having a youtube channel essentially it's just what makes your videos yours it's what makes you you and along with your personality your editing will get you very far it can make a break a video along with the thumbnail editing is usually like the downside to having a channel because it is very overwhelming personally i really procrastinate so yeah that's usually like the downside the first question that i have is how do i learn to edit like I said in the beginning, you can literally YouTube how to YouTube. I learned to edit from YouTube. Um, I would look up how to edit on the iPhone because that's what I had. I was recording off my phone. I was editing on my phone. So I looked up how to edit on the iPhone. I was around like 11 when I taught myself how to edit on the phone. So right now I'm 18. That's like seven years. So now editing to me is just like second nature. Started off using the app iMovie because I feel like that's just like a editor that's just really cut and dry. It's really simple. It's not rocket science to learn how to use iMovie. So I taught myself the basics on iMovie like adding text, adding music, adding pictures, all that other stuff. And then once I felt like I was more advanced, I moved over to a more complex app which is the app that I use now and I've been using it for almost like two years now and it's called Villo V-L-L-O if I wanted to know how to do a certain thing I would just look it up on YouTube how to do this 
on Velo. How you can go really far with just looking stuff up on YouTube. So a couple months ago, I was just thinking I wanted to improve my editing. So I went ahead and ordered the Miss Nala Nicole editing course. And that was the best thing I ever did. I'm not going to lie to y'all. That was the best money I ever spent to invest in myself. I felt like I really knew everything until I watched that video. And I'm just like, wow, I just got put on to so much stuff. I would definitely recommend you guys purchasing the Miss Nala Nicole editing course. It is linked down below along with everything else that I'm going to be mentioning in this video. I think it's around like $145 right now. And I'm telling y'all, y'all might think that that's an arm and a leg. But for every gem that she dropped in that video, $145 is worth it i took the tools that i already had and then i took the editing course and i just matched them all together and that's kind of how i got this new editing style that i have going on i definitely recommend y'all to purchase the editing course but i'm not going to be going all into detail about how i edit i feel like that's a video i'm going to do in the future in this series how i edit video will be coming soon i will be teaching y'all like or showing y'all how i edit so don't worry about it along with that editing is what keeps people engaged into your videos so make sure that you add text make sure you add music make sure you add pop-ups pictures memes just keep the people engaged because if the video gets boring people will click off make the video interesting keep them keep them watching you know add a little pop-up add a little meme music is also very important in youtube videos nobody just wants to listen to silence in the background so make sure you have music playing and don't have it up too loud though make sure you have like a low music playing in the background so that your videos don't sound empty or blank make sure that you use copyright free music though you can find copyright free music on youtube on soundcloud audio mac and yeah just look up copyright free music or copyright free music remixes and you will find everything that you need. Last thing I'm gonna talk about is the editing apps that I recommend. iMovie is very basic and it's cut and dry. I definitely recommend that if you're first starting off and you just wanna learn how to edit. For more complex editing, um, Villo, the app that I use now, I feel like you can start on this too, but it is a paid app. I forgot to mention that. I don't know how much it is anymore. When I first got it like two years ago, it was like $10 one time and you get the app. I remember somebody telling me like they upgraded and it's like, I don't even know how much money it is. I forgot. But definitely start on iMovie. And then once you get used to that, you can definitely just pay your money and learn here. I was watching Jaji Dior's video. She says she uses LumaFusion. I've never tried it before. She said it's a really good app to edit on. So I'm just going to recommend that to y'all too. And I also know um, other YouTubers use like CapCut and stuff like that. But yeah, I just never got into it. So yeah. The next topic we're going to be talking about is thumbnails. Thumbnails are very important. If nobody knows you on YouTube, your thumbnail is your first impression. That's the first thing they're going to see. Like I said, you have to make very attractive thumbnails. Make thumbnails that you would click on. Make sure that they're clean, they're not jumbled up. Make sure they're pretty, they have bright colors, like aesthetic pictures, really just the aesthetic that you're going for. Make sure that it's aesthetically pleasing to your aesthetic and make sure that it's something that you would click on. Try to make it look professional. Better the thumbnail, the more chances that you have to have a video blow up. Thumbnails can make or break a video. If you have a really bomb video and your thumbnail is just complete trash, nobody's gonna click on it because the thumbnail is ugly. It's not like we could just watch the video without seeing the thumbnail. <laughs> Along with aesthetically pleasing, make sure that your thumbnails are also unique because I know there's a lot of creators on YouTube. There's a lot of people doing the same things, but you have to make everything your own on YouTube. The ideas are all centralized, but make it your own because like I said, if you copy, it just doesn't get you very far. I also would recommend that you take pictures of literally everything. That's what I already do. I've been taking pictures of everything since I was younger. If I'm filming a vlog this day, oh, I got some pictures I could put in the thumbnail. I'm taking pictures of me. Oop, those pictures for the thumbnail. The thumbnails that I make for like my vlogs, they really show like the stuff I did in that day, I try to take pictures so that y'all can really like get the gist of what I'm doing and see what it looks like. And it just makes your thumbnails more clickable if you have pictures of the things that you did. So I recommend Pixar and Fonto for thumbnail making. Those are the only two apps that I really use. You can use like Pixar to like edit the picture and also make collages. And then Fonto is just what I use to put the words on top. I've been using these apps for years, like since I first started my YouTube channel. They'll definitely cater to your creativeness you can do a million and one things on both apps you you got the ball in your hand like right now 
the ball is in your hand so the next topic that i have for you guys is growing your channel last year on this day i had 8,000 subscribers so i feel like i can really tell y'all a little something about how to grow y'all channel any of y'all have seen me grow so much in the last year and although youtube is one of the hardest platforms to grow your following on did y'all know that youtube is one of the hardest platform to grow your following on i just want to let y'all know that your journey will not be the same as mine you can go faster than me you can go slower than me but that has no say so of where you will be and where i will be in two years you have to remember not to compare yourself because everybody's journey is different with youtube in the social media industry there's a lot of comparing oh she's doing this at this age but i'm this age and i'm not you feel me like you have to remember that your journey is your own and it won't be the same as everybody else's tunnel vision on you and just remember that you're you your journey is yours so don't let other people's success or other people's negative comments or just other people in general get in the way of that the first thing i have to let you guys know is to keep up with your growth i recommend youtube studio and youtube tracker youtube studio is very helpful for your youtube analytics it's what i use mostly now you can see your subscriber account your revenue your engagement your audience retention and literally so much more it goes into extreme detail about your channel you can see how your videos rank from 1 to 10 so if you aren't monetized yet and you're still trying to go your channel i definitely recommend youtube tracker i've always used the free version i really don't know what the paid version does and how it differs um it basically helps you keep track of your sub count it's like a little bar graph that it has to show you how close or far away you are from your 1000 subscribers and your 4,000 watch hours. I used that app more when I wasn't monetized because it just helped me keep on track and really see on a graph how far away I was from meeting my goal. My number one tip with growing your channel is to promote yourself. You are your number one supporter. And listen, a lot of y'all hit me with that. How do I get over my friends don't support me. My people in my city don't support me. They don't watch me. I witnessed this firsthand. People will not support you until it becomes popular to support you. It's sad, but it's true. It's just the way I don't know. The same people who didn't post me when I first started YouTube are the people that's posting me now trying to get a shout out. That's just how it happens. Post your content as many times as you want on every platform. So I promoted it on Instagram, on Snapchat, on TikTok. I always promoted myself and my family and my loved ones would always promote me too. So even if you don't have anybody else to do that, I, even if I didn't have anybody else to do that, I made sure that I supported me and that I promoted myself. But if you do want to grow your channel, like some people do use promo. I never did because I just like that I did it by myself. It's something that I can say is mine that I did like on my own. You're the one that has the dream to be a YouTuber. So you have to put that work in. No matter who gives a fuck what Joe, Sally, and John got to say about you promoting yourself on your platform. So the next tip and the next big thing that I always tell y'all every time Time somebody asks me how did I grow my channel and that's just to make trendy and relatable content if you see a trend going around hop on the train that girl trend becoming that girl the 5 a.m. morning routines like I said before try on hauls morning routines room transformations and like videos like productive vlogs are always great videos because they're always in style somebody's always looking up a morning routine somebody's always looking up a productive vlog because people watch stuff to get inspired to do them themselves on youtube people are just trying to be perfect and people like to see relatable stuff and stuff that they can relate to so if you're being relatable you're being trendy you got good thumbnails you got good searchable titles you you got the plan so my next topic is making money slash monetization one thing i want to say is that social media influencing it has a lot of money in it you can make a lot of money from just sharing your life on social media a lot of people think oh once i get the money then i'ma just feel like this and the third like y'all i'm telling y'all when my youtube channel popped off i'm getting new subscribers i'm getting new people and i'm just not acting on YouTube I posted that video I made a, a good check from it I got the money I was happy like oh my god I got my first big girl check but it's like everything that I want in life right now at this moment money cannot buy the money is a plus but you have to remember that it's just not all about the money I had the check and what I wanted in life I just wanted to be happy you can't buy you you can't buy that 
there's a lot of things that you have to do to start making money on YouTube, but with hard work and consistency, I'm telling you, you can do it. So in order to get monetized, you need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. And it sounds like a lot because it's a hell of a lot. A lot of people hit 1,000 subscribers well before they ever hit the 4,000 watch hours. It wasn't easy, but I feel like I got to my watch hours quicker since I was posting more. So that's where, you know, consistency is key comes in because you know you gotta post videos to build up those watch hours you must reach the 4,000 watch hours in the 12 months of you you first post a video basically if you post a video in July you need to have 4,000 watch hours by next July in order for your channel to get monetized I feel like a lot of people don't know this but YouTube itself is not paying you you make money from Google Google Adsense basically puts ads on your videos so when you watching a youtuber and you see an ad they're making money money from you watching that ad and I know like some youtubers say like oh don't skip the ads because you make money from the ads essentially being placed on your videos the amount you get paid will not be the same as others it won't even be the same for like every video you can have two videos with 100k views you'll be getting paid a different amount from both videos it really just depends on like the engagement of the video i know there's something called cpm some people have a higher cpm than others your cpm like fluctuates so sometimes your cpm is high so basically that's like per thousand views you get paid this much so along with like getting paid and stuff like that you have to make sure that you use copyright free music if your video was copyrighted basically you cannot make money from the videos when i first got monetized i could not make money from any of my prior videos because i had an intro song and it was copyrighted once i first learned about copyright i'm like what the fuck why didn't nobody tell me this shit that's why i'm telling y'all because if i knew better i would have done better but i always make sure to check if a sound or like a remix to a song is copyrighted i'll just screen record the sound off my phone upload it unlisted so y'all can't see that it's posted click monetize and see if it says like i can monetize it if it says that i can't then i just don't use it my next topic is sponsorships sponsorships is basically when a company will reach out to you so that you can promote their product basically like promo so the first thing in starting with sponsorships you have to make sure that you have a business email the businesses need a way to contact you so i have a business email it's always linked in my description box and it's linked on my instagram too so that if you see me and you want to work on me you can hit me up through my business email you don't want to use your personal email because sponsors and stuff can get mixed up in that and then a lot of the times your personal email is linked up to your accounts and so make sure that you have a separate email and it's just business so mine is michaelaomari.business so that you know it's my business email another question i got is how do you get sponsors how do you attract sponsors basically the videos you put out on youtube will attract sponsors just naturally a lot of um companies they look on youtube and they see creators who do the type of videos where their product will fit in enough for you to promote it and then they'll contact you if you post like hair videos you'll get hair sponsors if you post a lot about like jewelry and fashion you'll get those type of sponsors and then as you do more sponsors and you're kind of like doing a lot of everything you'll get more sponsors of different stuff clothes sponsors perfume sponsors purse sponsors also if you just want to start sponsors and you don't want to wait for a company to reach out to you you can also reach out to a company yourself a lot of the times brands will tell you exactly what to put in the description box so sometimes they leave like an email or like a whatsapp something like that that you can contact them on i would definitely recommend that you can reach out to them and say hey i'm so and so i have this many subscribers this many followers and i would love to promote your hair i love to work with you because they always need sponsors they always want to reach out to different people because different people bring other different people sometimes sponsors will pay you to promote their product and other times they'll just send you the product and if they feel like that's just enough to compensate you then they'll just do it that way but i only do sponsorships where you're paying me to be on this page poo because i don't do nothing for free the next question is how much did you charge charge however much that you think that you're worth your time your subscriber count the amount of views your videos get a lot of times sponsors will try to lowball you they'll say hey let me promote on your channel and i'll send you this wig and i'll give you a hundred dollars a hundred dollars that's not enough and i'm gonna just say that 
but as you grow and your channel is growing make sure that you up the price make sure that you're not letting them lowball you because companies will do that that's pretty much all that i have to say about sponsors okay so my last section is just loose advice that i have for you guys i got a couple other questions that didn't really fit in like any other category so i just wanted to make sure that i address them because i feel like they're really good questions i'm pretty sure y'all tired of hearing me talk at this point i'm tired of hearing myself talk the first question is how to come out of your shy slash insecure phase and how to get over vlogging in public. Honestly, with the vlogging in public, there's no way to get over it. Like, I just feel like everybody is embarrassed vlogging in public. People don't know what you're doing, so that you're gonna get stares, like, it's just kind of an uncomfortable situation to be in. It's just something that you really don't see every day. Getting out of your insecure phase, it's just something that you have to get comfortable with. Like as you keep doing, you're doing more videos, you're promoting yourself more, soon it'll just become second nature. Like sometimes you'll still get nervous because even I still get nervous when I'm posting a video or when I'm promoting myself because I just feel like nobody cares. I'm just being real with y'all but it's just something that you just have to do like you have to say fuck it we ball and just do it if you keep being shy and insecure you're only hindering your own success because how did i get over the you won't make it stigma from your peers so this one was really deep to me because why are your peers telling you that you won't make it why is anybody telling anybody that they can't do this they can't do that like that kind of hurt me a little bit because i'm like damn um, you have to support yourself first and before anybody else could ever tell me that they were proud of me and that they felt like i could make it i told myself that i was proud of me and that i knew i could make it and that i knew i could do this and i knew i could do that because if i did not support myself and i did not believe in myself where do y'all think I would be if I just didn't believe in myself? You have to have the mindset that you can do it. You can do anything that you put your mind to and that you're working towards. Don't let the negativity from other people or your peers or whoever get in the way of your success because that's the only thing that they're doing. Filling your head up with, oh, you can't do it. You won't make it because like you're a hater. The next question is, what do you think attracts people when it comes to growing your channel? Definitely good looking thumbnails. You just have to make that good first impression, just like if you were going to a job interview. So make sure that your thumbnails and your titles are always the best first impression every single time you're posting a new video. The next question is, how do you get comfortable with the camera? Again, it's just something that you have to get comfortable with. I don't know if I'm just the only person who just like, if I'm doing like, if I'm cooking noodles in the kitchen, Okay, so now I'm gonna put the noodles in the microwave, then I'm gonna add my salt, then I'm, I've always done that since I was little, just pretend like I'm making a video even when I'm talking to absolutely nobody. So I feel like that's one way how I kinda got comfortable with the camera, but I've always loved being in front of the camera. Just set your phone up and just talk to it. Like just practice. How, like, how do I even explain that? I know it can be weird, but just pretend as if it was somebody else on the other side. Like, I don't ever look at it as I'm talking to myself. I look at it as I'm talking to y'all. So you could probably YouTube how to get comfortable around the camera, and you'll probably get some better tips than what I just said. Because the next question is how to stay motivated when your videos aren't doing as good as you want. I got this from Jaji Dior because I was just watching her video, and she basically said, so remember that after you make a thumbnail, you edit the video and you post it, you have no control over how the video was gonna do. The only thing you can do is promote it and just let it sit there and do what it's gonna do. You can't force it to get 10 million views. Just make sure that you're putting out your quality content every single time. Don't dwell over the numbers because you will get so unmotivated that way. Even if my videos aren't doing as good as I want them to. I'm always happy because at least somebody saw it and somebody loved the video. It's not always gonna be up, 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 up. It's just how YouTube is, it fluctuates. My last question is how do you deal with negativity? And my answer is you don't. And I'm really thankful for the fact that I don't get negative comments really. Plus I just have thick skin. Like anything you say, I, I've heard that shit. Like it doesn't really faze me. I have thick skin. I've always been very confident. My mom told me confidence since I came out the womb. People on the internet say the most ruthless shit that they would not say in real life because they're behind the screen. I delete the comment, block them, and move on. Like, honestly, these people don't even know you in real life. So I'm not saying that the negative comments are valid, but they are gonna be there because everybody has their own opinion and everybody will have an opinion on every little thing that you do. 
and that's just how it is so thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope it was very 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 informational if you have any more questions or just have a question about something that i missed make sure you leave it down below and i'll definitely be looking for them so i can answer them if you want to see a how i edit video make sure you give this video a big thumbs up i don't know if y'all want more youtube 101 type things just let me know and i can definitely do it because i love putting y'all onto the sauce and so much fun filming this video and i feel so happy that i like shared the sauce like so if you want to see more of me, make sure you follow my socials. They're all linked down below. Instagram, my spam page, my TikTok, Snapchat. Follow me on there because that's where I am when I'm not on here. So yeah, I love you guys so, so, so much. And I'll see you soon with a new video.